and welcome back to our channel. I'm Kelsey, this is Liam, and Claymore is right over here, kind of almost off the camera. So I've made a video on this before, but I didn't feel like it was clear or concise enough, so I'm going to try to accomplish that today, and if I fail, well, I'll make a third video. I wanted to share with you my experience on how I got my iron levels up really quickly, and uh, safely, also naturally, during pregnancy. <laughs> That's kind of a lot, but... It's true. But about two weeks before I was supposed to give birth, I found out that my iron levels were really low. Well, my hemoglobin levels. So it was like a 7.8, and comfortably it's supposed to be an 11 or so, my specialist and doctor told me. I found out that late because my doctor kept on pushing this glucose like test, and it was a gestational diabetes test. And it's basically where you drink this red food dye with a whole bunch of sugar slash glucose in this thing. And I just thought that was completely unnatural, completely unhealthy, and could harm your baby or yourself. And I was like, okay, you're checking me for diabetes, but you could give me something else or my baby something else in the process. And at the time, the way that gestational diabetes was explained to me is that it's something that goes away after pregnancy. So it's like... If I'm not having any issues with my sugar intake and I barely eat that much sugar anyway, why are we checking for it? But anyways, so I declined it when I was pregnant with Claymore and it was no problem. But when I was pregnant with Liam, he was pushing it a lot and to the point where I felt uncomfortable going back to the doctor because I felt like I was being forced per se to do something that I didn't want to do. So I didn't go back until a month before I was supposed to have Liam and I did lab work about a week later and when the results came back I had two weeks to get my iron levels up. So the recommendations at the time by the specialist and my OBGYN were to get an iron infusion and after doing a whole bunch of iron infusion research Hey Clay, Claymore, please stop jumping buddy. After doing a whole bunch of iron infusion research I um, found out I was just really scared. The specialist like completely scared me, um, saying that if I don't get an iron infusion or get my levels up quickly, um, I could have a blood transfusion. And she freaked me out about the blood transfusion, saying that I could get AIDS, I could get HIV, um, you know, any type of disease or strain that would be in the blood, um, just tons and tons of stuff. So I called my aunt, she ended up comforting me and saying, you know, the blood is filtered so well nowadays that it's just very uncommon for anything like that to happen and you know blood or blood transfusions really aren't that bad the specialist told me that there is no food vegetable or meat under the sun that can get my iron or hemoglobin levels up as high as they needed to be in two weeks and so i was kind of in a panic they had already scheduled my iron infusion for like two days after that meeting at the specialist and I then called my uncle who is a missionary in India and he knows a lot about natural remedies and stuff like that so I called him his wife was pregnant at the time also and um, he already knew what to tell me because she was also iron deficient so he told me right away about this Floridex Flora Vital Iron and Herbs and I uh, <laughs> sent Eli to the health food store and he picked up the last bottle. This was $50 at the health food store. I think it was $36 on eBay, brand new. Um, so after going to the health food store, we got all of our bottles off of eBay after that and also ended up getting bottles for all of the rest of my family because everyone was iron deficient. So um, this has really helped us a lot. Um, this Flora Vital Iron and Herbs is a liquid extract formula. It's rich in iron and B vitamins, it's easily absorbed, non-constipating, yeast and gluten free. And the ingredients are grape juice, pear juice, black currant juice, water, cherry juice, black cherry juice, carrot juice, and ascorbic acid as an antioxidant. Um, so this is recommended for um, adults 12 and over and children 4 to 11. So, um, also something to remember is please keep the safety cap on, keep this out of the reach of children because iron overdoses are very serious and like if you have any iron supplements around the house, they can really harm your kids so and animals. So just keep them out of reach, 
make sure you put them away after you use them or don't even like bring them out just like keep them up high where the kids cannot reach them um, so I'm gonna go over my routine really quick on how I got from 7.8 to a 9.8 in one week and pretty much got my doctors and specialists off my back as far as doing the iron infusion okay so basically in the morning I would take blackstrap molasses. This is plantation blackstrap molasses. It's unsulfured. There it is. Okay. So um, I took a tablespoon of this and about four to six ounces of milk and I'd switch off between almond milk and soy milk. So every morning I would mix that together. It looked like chocolate milk, but it didn't taste like it. Um, and I would mix that together and drink it and swallow my prenatal and then my prescribed uh, 325 milligram ferrous sulfate. So, uh, if you're iron deficient, you've probably already been prescribed something like that. Your prenatal is something that you are already recommended to take, so you probably have that on hand. And then, you can find this at Walmart. So, uh, that's pretty easy to get a hold of. The taste is kind of acquired, but if you're really trying to get your iron levels up, it's really going to help you. Um, so, it's worth it. The next thing that I would do a couple hours later, and I would take this with my food. So like at breakfast time, I would take it like in the middle of breakfast or right before breakfast and I would make sure I'd eat right away. Then about two hours after breakfast, I would mix about four to six ounces of this, put it into like a glass, and then 20 milliliters of the Floridex um, iron and herbs. And so the, um, the serving size for this is 10 milliliters. So since I was severely iron deficient, I took 20. So if you have way more than like two weeks left until delivery, I would just take the prescribed amount, which is 10 milliliters every day. Um, so like, cause I finished this bottle so quickly because I was taking it, um, I was taking 40 milliliters of this per day. Cause I would take it, after like two hours after breakfast and then at around eight o'clock and then just before I would go to bed I would take this again. One of the really important things about this Floridex is that it will stain your teeth so you need to brush your teeth just after taking it like right after taking it go and brush your teeth because it will stain your teeth and you will be very sorry. It didn't stain my teeth because I listened. Anyway, I, at the time of taking all this stuff, I was 116 pounds. I don't know if that matters at all. Right now, I'm 86 pounds, so I have a little bit of weight gain to do. But um, yeah, so this is the routine I did, and it really helped me because I noticed that at this point, I really started to rant, so let me sum it up for you. Basically, this helped me to the point where I went from only being awake for around 6 hours every day to being awake for about 14 on the first day. I was so tired, so iron deficient, that I could barely be out of bed. I would sleep for 8 hours, wake up, and feel like I haven't slept for a week. So this insanely changed my life and I am forever grateful to my uncle and to this product for existing. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, I will try to answer them to the best of my ability in the comments. Uh, but yeah, I hope this helps you and I wish you the best of luck if you're pregnant um, or if you're not and you're just trying to, you know, feel better. I hope you feel better and I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for watching. Also, one more thing I wanted to add about the Floridex is that it will turn to alcohol if you leave it at room temperature once it's open. So once you open it, you need to make sure you're storing it in the refrigerator or it will turn to alcohol and we all know that that's bad for your baby. Um, and you know, so just stick that sucker in the fridge. You want to say bye? Mm. Say bye. <laughs> Hold on, sorry. Okay, so bye again. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as well and tap that notification bell. Thanks for watching and see you soon. More videos come, so please stay tuned.